Hey, it's me, Bobby Dilly Dree, and welcome back to my playthrough of uh, WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Here's the card, and you know, we're gonna have a US title match between Paul Butcher and Rio Rigo, and the main event is gonna be Heel vs. Heel, Jim Nighthard vs. Chris Master, Chris Masters. Let's see, Shelton Roy. And I'm gonna play this match. Uh, Paul Butcher versus William Regal. In this game, they're tag team. Though I don't use them as tag teams. Uh, and by default, uh, Paul Butcher is a heel. Even though during his um, uh, pirate gimmick, he was a baby face. Again, uh, Drew McIntyre should take this entrance. I mean, uh, not like every time he comes to the ring, you know, it's just like a special occasion. Uh, maybe he could do that across at the, uh, at the, uh, uh, the UK pay-per-view, uh, crash at the, uh, cash or, uh, what's it called again? Uh, uh, crash at the castle, I believe it was called. Yeah, Paul Butcher is another person I'm trying to push. <laughs> but anyways, uh, William Regals became our U.S. champion at SummerSlam, uh, cutting uh, Shelton Benjamin's uh, title ring pretty short. I wonder if Shelton Benjamin had a uh, proper title defense, like, and by that I don't think he ever uh, actually defended the title and won. Like his uh, first uh, title defense was against William Regal and ended up taking that title for himself. I don't know, I wish uh, WWE would have had his uh, other music, you know, uh, the one that's uh, much better. Because, you know, that is a heel music. Uh, I think this one is uh, his uh, manager music. At least it sounds more like a manager music than a uh, professional wrestler music. But anyways, yeah, I noticed throughout my playthrough that I have, you know, a pattern of how I like to uh, print this uh, game. And it's usually, it's uh, run to the opponent and attack them first, you know, both heel and baby face. Well, anyways, uh, William Regal, I, you know, like the character and, you know, his performance in the ring. Like, at least in the WWE ring, I probably wouldn't uh, put him in the main event. I mean, I heard rumors that one time when he uh, won King of the Ring, they thought about putting the uh, WWE title on him. But uh, press changed because of... Uh, I want to say it's, uh, I think it was like a drug issue, so they uh, pretty much uh, made him the uh, Intercontinental Champion, but uh, I know Real Regal doesn't seem like the uh, World Champion type, at least in, uh, according to WWE standards. I mean, not that he wouldn't 
not that I say he would make a bad champion. I just don't think uh, he would be a draw. So you probably had to get him a pretty short title reign. Which uh, probably would have been the plan. Either that or uh, they did uh, what uh, WWE did to your know, CM Punk and you know had that like the uh, you know the world title the uh, WWE title at the uh, middle of the car while the uh, main event match you know you know like John Cena or Randy Orton you know take the uh, main event spot Yeah, it's like Ray and Rigo had a this referee. And that, it's like, even though this is not, uh, you said that it's not a disqualification, even though it should be, like, I try to, uh, keep the, uh, kayfabe alive because I'm pretty sure that should be a disqualification. I mean, I know it is in uh, WrestleMania uh, 19, uh, the, the uh, video game, uh, but not in this game. And uh, let's see, then I'm a little bit surprised that Paul Bercho got up uh, really fast from that uh, power of the punch. And of course, uh, it, that also should be a disqualification, but, uh, you know, I let that one go because, you know, video game logic. And I, I thought he had, like, a secondary finisher. Well, if he does, I don't know what it is. It ain't the regal stretch. Or if it is, it's, uh, probably perform a bit differently. Again, that should be a disqualification, but it's not in this game. And we go retain the US title. Yeah. So that's a uh, one that's down. Well, uh, Regal's not my boy, but he's a lot of people's boy. Which is real because, you know, he's a very, well, if you're going by the OSW uh, boy logic, like, uh, what qualifies as a boy is that uh, it's kind of a guilty pressure, you know. He, uh, it can be respected around the wrestling community, but uh, not too well respected. And, you know, Regal kind of fits both the, uh, kind of like in both categories where he's very respected for his uh, character and his promos and, you know, wrestling skill. But he's, but at the same time, he put into a better situation that, uh, let's take, let this play out for a bit. Uh, again, uh, I don't know why he doesn't have an interest music. And, uh, you know, I decided to skip that because, uh, copyright. But anyways, uh, uh William Regal been put into a uh, comedic situation, like, I think he was put into the dress, uh, the first member of, uh, Vince McMahon kissed my ass curb, and, uh, uh, drinking uh, Chris Jericho pee, uh, Chris Jericho uh, spiked it, uh, spiked uh, Real Regal's tea. Uh, he peed inside the cup. 
So it's like, uh, definitely uh, good reasons to put Ray Regal in the uh, boy stable, but I don't know, it's like, like I don't, I, I know I got, you know, like a couple of boys of mine, you know, like Big Daddy V or, you know, Viscera is definitely one of them. Uh, Chris Masters will probably be a contender. Not sure if be up there. Just that. Uh, uh, Boogie Man will probably be on there. You know, I really gotta think about this boy stable. Uh, uh, Taka Michinoku, I guess, even though he's was just a mid card guy. Though he was in that segment in Kaintai with uh, Val Venus. Uh, you know the one I'm talking about. I mean, uh, sorry about the audio. Uh, sometimes it cuts out like that. I'm not sure why. Uh, at least the uh, sound still in, in sync. That's it. Let's see. Whoops. Uh. Let's see. If I had to pick a boy in TNA, uh, you see, I, you see, I watched TNA in the 2010s, so I mean, just uh, options there. You see, I just can't think of. Uh, oh yeah, Crazy Steve. Uh, he'll pr probably be on the list. Though, uh, it's, well, it would be either Crazy Steve or uh, Mike Knox, uh, when he was uh, Dion Carney. Probably that whole faction, to be honest. I don't know, I, I try not to uh, put like tag team or factions in, uh, in uh, the boy stable with this, but. Uh, they will probably qualify. But anyways, that storyline, at least in my head, is that Chris Masters, even though uh, Chris Masters is a heel and Mr. Perfect's a babyface, they still have respect for each other and try to help each other out. Though uh, Mr. Perfect is, you know, still a queen babyface and probably not going to interfere in any matches. You know, with that being said, he's not going to, uh, he's not going to uh, stop Chris Master from cheating himself. <laughs> oh boy, sick. That man, Jen Nighthawk is still pulling Drew. How many uh, world title uh, opportunities did uh, Jim Nighthawk have in this match? I think this is like either number four or five. But anyways, like... Honestly, I thought I would end this match already. Okay, that, this should be the end. Yeah, that should do it. <laughs> Pretty good way to uh, end the match, if I say so myself. <laughs> I mean, 
I'd be surprised if uh, that were sort of finished in one of Chris Masters' match. I guess Chuck Benjamin would be a boy, though he's uh, more respected. I don't think that would disqualify him for the list. Uh, I try to go for the more guilty pressure one. Yeah, but Mr. Perfect didn't do anything in this match. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure why they announced the uh, manager's uh, name. I don't know. It's like, this is just. Kept it as Chris Masters. I mean, it's, it'd be one thing if it was like a tag team, but uh, Mr. Perfect was a competitor in this match. You see, Wall still got the uh, ratings. Uh, 2010. That's a pretty big increase. And I had like a world title on my show, so uh, that's not pretty good. And, uh, you know, we could blame it on the boogeyman. You see, you got Mark Henry and Big Daddy V doing pretty well. Well, Mark Henry right now. Still being unstoppable. You know, good for them. Good for them. Anyways, uh, time to push uh, Gregory Hill and Paul Butchill. Let's see, the main event of this uh, show is going to be, I believe, uh, yeah, uh, Shelton Benjamin and Ken Kennedy. Oh no, I decided to move them down. Shelton Benjamin, Ken Kennedy versus uh, uh, Snitsky, Gregory Helm, and Bam Bam Megano. Kind of sure I made this the main event match. Alright. Okay, so what did I make the main event match? Oh, Paul Burchill versus Mr. Perfect. All right, kind of an odd way to. Well, you know, Snitsky's still in the um, 60 uh, popularity. So I, I guess it makes sense to uh, have that lore on the card, even though the majority of the people in that match are in the uh, 90s and. 80s. Man, my neck hurts. Let's see. Okay, so Paul Bircher and Jim Nightheart is going to have another match. You know, to go to compete in, you know, twice in one week. Vito, the Boogeyman, and the Vari. Kind of a weird uh, position to put them in. Uh, well, Matt Hardy is a bit better. At least uh, choice wise. <laughs> So Carlito and Real Rigo versus Psychosis and I think Trevor Guerrero, yeah, and Tori Wilson as the manager. And try to figure out what's going to be uh, the opening match for this card. I think I have. Uh, I want to say uh, Matt Hardy versus Vito. Or did I just see that that's called break? I rarely do that. Oh, it's a handicap match. Let's 
a case of Snisky and Gregory Helms. I guess uh, I guess it's a def decent opening match. So uh, just begin the week. You see Snisky and Gregory Helmsworth. Carlito Real Rigo, Boogeyman, Paul Bercho, Snisky and Ben Ben Bigio, and you know, Gregory Helm. And we're gonna play Bar uh, Paul Bercho versus uh, Mr. Perfect. Taz is a playable character, but he's not. Uh, He's not an option for the uh, general manager mode, as well as Jerry the King are, because they are both commentators for their respective show, uh, SmackDown and Raw. I wish they made Taz an option. Or that he can't uh, pick uh, Shane McMahon either. I guess Shane McMahon's not allowed because uh, he's the uh, general manager of Raw. And SmackDown has Teddy Long. So, you gonna have the uh, Babyface vs. Babyface match. Uh, a Babyface vs. Babyface match. Uh, rest the uh, heels. Uh, as I say, uh, with the uh, heels at the uh, manager position. Uh, still got. Right. Well, I think it's just allergies. I, I was going to say cold, but I think it's just allergies because it comes and go. Uh, Triple H still looks disappointed. I don't know. It's like that look always uh, catch me off guard. It's like the look that uh, you know you give a silent fart and the person. Uh, Realize, uh, you know, they just found out the smell and, you know, know who to lick. But anyways, uh... Paul Bercho is... Gonna get a decent push, uh... I mean, I guess Pirate Paul Butcher is, uh, I want to say that I did put him in my boy stable in the area part. Uh, if I did, uh, now it's kind of a, a toss-up. I don't know, it's like, I don't know, I, I really got to sit down and really think about, uh, what my, uh, boy stable would be. Because, uh, you know, I, you know, I keep on uh, remembering, you know, different wrestlers, and some of them I haven't watched a match of theirs for a while. Like Paul Bercho, uh, this version, like, I don't remember one of his matches, but I remember the character. Of course, you know, this uh, gimmick is to, uh, I, I thought it's gonna be an elbow drop. Uh, usually, uh, super heavyweights like uh, the Great Carly in the Big Show do uh, that weird knee drop that only can uh, hit anybody. Weird that uh, Paul Brescia does it, but uh, but as I was saying, this pirate gimmick uh, was to uh, capture the uh, pirates of the 
Terry being crazy that was going on. Uh, uh, Chris Master was uh, blocking the camera there for a bit. But uh, anyways, uh, again, Paul Bercher is like a maybe in the boy stable car, uh, category. I mean, as I say that, uh, he probably you know, going to end up changing, changing my mind again. So, you know, I guess take that with a grain of salt. But uh, Vistra would uh, definitely be on there, no matter what. Ooh, picture to get. Yeah, I'm not surprised he doesn't have a chit. I think this is the finish of the match, even though he probably should kick out. Oh no, okay. Oh no, I thought he was going to kick out because uh, his uh, ball was still kind of full. The uh, B1 on the uh, top right. I don't know, it's, like, it's kind of weird how that works. Because, uh, like, you know, I had, like, Mark Henry uh, decrease that bar quite a bit and still able to kick out his finisher. Anyways, uh, pretty much getting near the end of the part since you check out the uh, ratings and the. Uh, Everything else. Let's see, Paul Butcher won two matches in a row, so he should get a good boost in popularity. And Ross still won in the ratings. Let's see. Yeah, Greg and Hill got a pretty decent boost. You see, Mr. Perfect. Oh, okay, 77, that's actually a pretty good boost. You see, this at 68. Very good boost right there. But, anyways, that's the end of the part. Thank you for watching. This is me, Bobby Daddy Dream, and I'll catch you guys later.